Erev Tov, Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benun. You are watching Israeli News Live. Guys, it is a hotbed yet once again. We have a video footage. This has only been posted just a few hours ago. It is very concerning to us. We cannot confirm the report for sure to say that this is factual, but from what we can see on this video and what's being said in a very small commentary on the video that was just posted a few hours ago, it is posted by a Russian, by a Russian individual on their own private channel there that uh, there is a huge shipment of tanks. Let me play the video for you as we talk about it. Huge shipment of tanks. You can see arm, uh, armored personnel carriers. You can see uh, trucks. You can see uh, all types of equipment in the video here on your screen here. This, according to the person that has uploaded this on their YouTube channel, only like 100 views, of course, the box cars don't know what's in the box cars or anything. You're going to see even more tanks as he zooms in on this. More uh, tankers, uh, fuel refuelers, etc. Uh, more Russian tanks, etc. Where is it going to? According to the guy that loaded the video, this is in Russia. It is actually headed to Crimea. Now, from what it looks like and what he's saying there, uh, this is actually close to an area called uh, Kirk, uh, Kirch Ferry. Uh, so it's the, it's the area where they, they would carry all this equipment from the Russian side because Russia's border goes right down there and Russia can cross over to Crimea, the little peninsula that was at one time part of Ukraine. Now notice at the top of your screen here is Donetsk. This is the area that is under heavy shelling, and of course that shelling is happening because NATO is backing Ukraine, Petro Poroshenko. He's really not even the true uh, president of Ukraine. He is the appointed president. Uh, of course, they called it a vote, but it was after the overthrow of the Ukrainian government where the CIA, according to evidence, has been presented uh, very much had a part in the overthrow of the Ukraine government. And we see here now that Russia is sending tanks, trucks, fuel. And by the way, in the video there, as it goes on there, uh, it actually, you'll see here in just a moment that even tankers are involved in this as well. When I say tankers, fuel tanks, uh, possibly diesel or something like that to be able to power the tanks that they're sending there as well. I did a rough count. It appears to be about 30 tanks that are on their way to Kirk, Kirch Ferry, which is the area, the port there, where this would go across to the Crimea Peninsula. Now, question is, is Russia looking like, are they preparing for a possible attack that could come against the people of Donetsk and Luhansk. We already know, we've reported here in the last few days, there is reports see, uh, creeping out of East uh, Ukraine that they are talking about launching an attack, even an air attack on the people of Donetsk. Uh, and they are talking even in some of these uh, intel reports using chemical weapons. Uh, now, I don't know if that's really going to happen or not, but unfortunately, these people that are in Donetsk, they are, it's the attacks that are going on now on a daily basis is coming against civilians. Essence of Time, DPR TV, this man on your screen here, trying to get in touch with him, I don't know who he is personally, but he is an American citizen from what I can tell, speaks perfectly good English, and he has been reporting how these attacks are occurring against civilians. Listen to this. Shelling has been happening on private residents. Uh, another video that he just released, this one was filmed on August the 1st. Listen to what he Absolutely says here. Remember, it's your government that's doing this. It's the U.S. government that's doing this. The Ukraine Nazis don't do anything.
without the permission and instruction of NATO and the U.S. government. So every time that civilians get bombed in Donbass, it's because the U.S. government, NATO, IMF, all that scum, told them, go ahead and, and, and terrorize them some more. Let's see if we can terrorize them some more. The people of uh, Donbass are, are not afraid, though. I mean, of course, it's dangerous. Of course, it's terrible. You can die at any minute. I mean, this house got bombed on Saturday night and on Sunday night. Saturday night and Sunday night. Now, I did a couple of different clips of the video here. I thought I'd loaded the other one, but I had not. The other one was from the clip of the last news that I did. It was, the crater has been covered up a lot. The, the old man that he was interviewing there said that they had already been filling the crater in. But this happened last Saturday and Sunday. They were, they were shelled twice. Approximately 50 rounds that came in into that neighborhood. Ten houses were, were, were hit uh, there, at that time, there was no casualties. There has been reported two people have been killed today, civilians. Uh, and yet again, it's 120 millimeter shells that are causing the damage. It is prohibited by the Minsk agreements. And they're saying that it's the people over there in eastern Ukraine doing it. There's such propaganda, guys. It just so irritates me all the propaganda that's being said now just to give you an example of that type of propaganda before i play to you from the daily vertical let me read to you this is the un report right here un rings alarm bells on record number of civilian casualties in eastern ukraine not just ukraine civilians Eastern Ukraine, right? Now, when it gets down to here, this guy on the Daily Vertical is going to quote the UN report, but he's going to fail to tell you it's East Ukraine's, and he's also going to fail to tell you it's the Ukrainian government that killed them all, not the Russians, as he makes it or as he alludes to in his report. See, the UN Human Rights Office documented 69 civilian casualties in eastern Ukraine on June 2016, including 12 dead and 57 injured. Now, watch what the man says. An American puppet for the U.S. government. Hi there, I'm Brian Whitmore, host of the Power Vertical Podcast. Brian Whitmore. This is the Daily Vertical. Well, it turns out that July wasn't just the deadliest month in a year for Ukrainian soldiers. According to statistics released this week by the United Nations, it was also the deadliest month in a year for Ukrainian civilians as well. Ukrainian civilians. Eight civilians were killed and 65 were wounded in July, according to the UN. Now that's July. It wasn't much better when 12 were killed and 57 wounded. So in case anybody hasn't noticed that yet, you can pretty much stick a fork in the mid ceasefire agreement. Can you believe it? It's done. Now watch him blame Russia. is shaping up to be a war without end. It's a war without end because Vladimir Putin's regime is not going to accept any settlement that does not give Russia a de facto veto. So it's Vladimir Putin's fault. He doesn't tell you that according to the UN report, guys, the ones that killed him are the Ukrainian NATO-backed soldiers. It is a crying shame. No wonder why Russia is sending in reinforcements. Russia knows not only, not only are they planning on attacking eastern Ukraine, they're also going to go after what? Crimea. Remember, now Russia is getting the intelligence. We see that Turkey is now, they, Turkey got together, got back with Vladimir Putin, getting in good relations again. But Turkey originally was supposed to be part of the plan to take back Crimea. Maybe Erdogan has let him know what the real plan was for Crimea all along. It was going to be Turkey helping Guess what? Yes, Petro Poroshenko in Ukraine to take back Crimea to start that third world war. Will it escalate out of control? Who knows? Another one to prove that it's actually the fault of the Ukraine side, Petro Poroshenko's side, Kiev. Let me give you another little insight here. This was on the telegraph.co.uk, May 3rd, 2016. Two shells fell amongst vehicles near a, sporad, a, a separatist checkpoint just south of Donetsk, killing four civilians, including a pregnant woman. Both sides blame one another for the attack. Observers from the OSCE Special Monitoring Mission 
who attended the scene said, Crater analysis indicated two 122-millimeter artillery shells banned under the ceasefire agreement had been fired from a west-southwesterly direction. While the mission explicitly refrains from assigning blame for such incidents, that is the direction of the Ukraine-controlled territory. Well, what do you know? You know, it's so sad, guys. It is so sad. Russia sending in backup. Looks like Russia. Now, Russia's not sending it this time to the Donetsk people. They did send them some tanks here in the last week or so. But now Russia's beefing up their military presence in Crimea. At least that's what the video seems to indicate. It may not be too good here in the very near future, especially in Eastern Europe. It could easily turn into a very volatile situation. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Guys, remember us in your support this news broadcast. We need your help. Without you, we cannot bring this type of reporting to you. I'm Stephen Benoon with IsraeliNewsLive.org. Our website on the screen there. Visit us there. There's a donation place there. Or check us out on IsraelReturns.com. Our address is there if you care to mail a check to the Czech Republic. God bless you and thank you for watching. Shalom. Aval. Ze'en shalom. But it's a no peace at all.